Hi everybody, my name is Mudasir Mohammed. I'm a technical support specialist here at Sigma Life Science. Today I'm going to give you an introduction to qPCR concepts. I shall begin with a small background of the concepts, then move on to discuss traditional methods that have been used for quantification of gene expression, followed by application of qPCR in gene expression and quantification. The qPCR technique is used to study gene expression which is a dynamic process depending on the state and conditions of the cells. The dynamism of gene expression reflects on the level of mRNA within the cells. The mRNA level can fluctuate by its expression and degradation, which the qPCR technique can be used to quantify. This is important, for example, in a disease state, the level of gene expression can be significantly affected, hence qPCR can be employed for robust diagnosis of disease in the real time. One of the main traditional methods for quantification of gene is by northern blotting, which is often used to estimate the expression level of a gene by visualization of its abundance of its mRNA transcript in a sample. The RNA is purified and separated by gel electrophoresis and transferred to a solid matrix, which is then blotted by either a DNA or RNA specific probe complementary to the gene of interest. This method is laborious, inaccurate, and often time-consuming. The invention of probate's chemistry has made real-time qPCR robust in the detection or quantification of gene expression. I will discuss more about the chemistries in other talks. However, here and the next two slides the use of fluorescent reporter is briefly described. The method relies on a DNA-based probe with fluorescent reporter at one end and the quencher at the opposite end. The quencher absorbs the emission from the reporter and hence there is no signal detected. The PCR reaction is prepared as usual and then the reporter probe is added which binds to the target. During PCR, the probe annuls to the target region. As the qPCR reaction commences, the probe and the primers annul to the target DNA. The schematic diagram here shows how the qPCR work. Polymerization of new DNA strand is initiated from the primers binding to the target region. The polymerase have 5 prime, 3 prime exonuclease activity and it degrades the probe. Upon probe degradation, the fluorescent reporter separates from the quencher, hence it results in the increase of fluorescence which is detected. The fluorescence in qPCR is detected and measured by the real-time PCR thermocycler. The geometric increases corresponds to exponential increase of the product. This is then plotted as you can see on the right hand side of the diagram, from which the CQ or the Fresco cycle is determined of each reaction. This is then used to calculate or quantify the gene of interest. This slide shows the principle of qPCR. The results obtained during qPCR is expressed in a chart as you can see here. The y-axis is the DNA concentration and the x-axis represents the cycle. If you think of your standard PCR reaction with a doubling of DNA after each cycle, with a low initial DNA concentration, you'll see an increase or doubling of your template DNA with each cycle leading to an exponential amplification. After a number of cycles of applica application slows down and reaches a plateau, with a high DNA concentration again, we see an increase of the template DNA with each cycle. However, a plateau is reached much sooner as compared to when amplifying a smaller amount of DNA. Therefore, in order to quantify the amount of DNA, we need to take measurements during the linear phase of amplification. Measurements are then taken from a threshold level, where the DNA concentration and its fluorescent is greater than the background fluorescent. From this threshold level, the CQ of each sample is then measured. The cycle threshold is the number of PCR amplification cycle required to reach the threshold DNA concentration. If you have a higher initial DNA concentration, then a fewer CQs are required to reach the threshold DNA concentration. However, if you have a low initial DNA concentration, for example, if the expression level of your gene of interest turn out to be really low, the more cycles are required to reach the threshold DNA concentration, 
and hence the CQ will be much higher. So what about the target in qPCR? Your target in qPCR can be DNA or RNA if only genomic DNA needs to be detected which contains introns, the template should be in an intron or alternatively span intron and exon. This would show that genomic DNA is being amplified as it contains both introns and exons. If your template is mixture of DNA and RNA which contains both introns and exons, the template region should be within an exon this, this, as these are conserved in both DNA and RNA. If RNA is used as a template in qPCR, one of the primers should be positioned over the exon boundaries. The template should span two exons, therefore here are, there are no introns present to be copied to the cDNA during reverse transcription. Here's some more information on selecting RNA as a target. Here are two options. Option number one, to position your primer over an exon boundary which prevents the amplification of genomic DNA that may contaminate the RNA cDNA sample. And option number two, primer is to be designed to span exon boundaries. This will mean that any genomic DNA present may also be amplified. However, this can be separated by melt curve analysis to identify larger products containing an intronic region. So where do you find intron and exon boundaries? So let us say if you want to design primers over intron-exon junction. Where is the information? Ensemble is a very informative database for identifying gene intron-exon boundaries. Here we will use the gene GDF52 as an example in the search window. Once the NSAMO page has changed to supply information of the GDF52 gene, you can go to the left hand side of the screen and click on the genomic sequences. A new window will appear. In this window, the introns and exons are distinguished by different color. You can then copy this sequence into a Word document to save or further manipulate it. Now coming to the design of primers and probes. For a successful qPCR design of good primers and probes are very essential. There are a number of software that can be used to design these. We use the software called Beacon Designer software which uses a number of stringent parameters as you can see on the slide which include Mfold Blast for the design of robust and specific probes and primers. In this small introduction, I'll briefly describe gene expression and quantification using qPCR, traditional methods such as Northern Bullard, which has been used frequently before the invention of qPCR technique, fluorescent reported dye chemistries, which involve a 5' prime label as well as the 3' prime quencher, which once separated, the fluorescent signal is released from the probe. Real-time qPCR thermocycler, which is used to detect the signals and then these signals are used to calculate the CT CQ values. The principles of qPCR target selection such as DNA or RNA or both and also our probe design software which is called the Beacon Designer. If you would like some assistance with the design of primers and probes, you can contact us via www.sigma.com slash designmyprobe. We provide a free design service and the feedback we received of the assays that we have designed have been very positive. Once you are in this site, you will see Oligo Architect online, which can help you to design primer by yourself. It uses the latest algorithm and the results can be returned in real time. However, if you have more complicated designs, you can click on Oligo Architect Consultative Design Service, which you will be appointed an expert to create design for you. Please feel free to submit your designs using this software. Apart from essay designs, we also provide essay optimization, troubleshooting, and importantly, online seminars. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.